You're coming into land, you've nailed the approach, you're lined up with the center line and you're descending at a steady rate, ready to land. You pull back into the flare, ready to touch down and you don't touch down. You keep flowing, you keep flowing, you keep flowing and then bang, you crunch it into the ground. Welcome to the world of ground effect, the pain in the arse of student pilots all around the world. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to class 12 in the Principles of Flight series. Today we're going to be looking at ground effect and why we seem to float just above the runway when coming into land before touchdown. This class is going to be nice and short, but you'll certainly get very familiar with ground effect in your flying career. Ground effect is a phenomenon where there is a sudden increase in lift when close to the ground, or you could conversely view it as a huge reduction in drag. It will often cause the aircraft to stop descending at its previous rate and float down the runway. As the name suggests, ground effect it only occurs when you are close to the ground. It's usually only experienced within about a wingspan of the ground. And the closer the wing is to the ground, the more the effects of ground effect are experienced. This means that a high winged aircraft will experience this a lot less than a low wing aircraft. This reduction in the ground effect makes high winged aircraft less susceptible to floating down the runway and it is one of the reasons why high winged aircrafts are used on short runways. This is because it will pose less risk of floating down and taking up a whole runway on landing. One of the causes of ground effect is something known as the ram effect whereby a cushion of air is created underneath the aircraft between it and the ground. So basically what happens is the air below the aircraft becomes compressed, but it has the same amount of mass and basically the volume reduces. This means that the density of the air goes up overall. And as we learned from our very first class in Principles of Flight, density varies directly with the static pressure. So density goes up, the static pressure goes up, and that static pressure will then push back against the aircraft. The second component of ground effect is the reduction in strength of the wing tip vortices and a reduction therefore of the downwash over the wing. So when close to the ground, the wing tip vortices come off the uh, wing tip and they physically hit the ground um, as they come around. This means that they aren't able to flow freely as there's this physical barrier in the way. It essentially acts the same way as a winglet does and it blocks the air from correcting the pressure differential and therefore this reduces the strength of them as a result. That reduced amount of downwash over the whole wing means that we have a smaller induced angle of attack. That essentially means that our reaction force is less angled back and more angled up. So it's a greater proportion of lift, or as we said at the start, you could view that as a reduction in drag. The reduction of induced drag here is very significant because at slow speeds, our total drag is more made up of induced drag than parasite drag, and we get a large decrease in our total drag levels experienced when we're in ground effect. Ballooning is a consequence of ground effect. So as the aircraft enters the ground effect, a sudden increase in lift causes the aircraft to climb, but the nose doesn't uh, go up with this climb. So we shouldn't exceed our critical angle in theory. However, at the point we enter ground effect, we're normally traveling pretty slowly already. We're coming into land, so our speed is quite slow, and that means we have to get a lot of our lift from our coefficient of lift, and we are consequently quite high up on this graph, just a random uh, point there, for example. The sudden change in the amount of downwash means that our induced angle reduces. This is why we get that greater proportion of lift and less drag. But with a smaller induced angle of attack, it means that our effective angle of attack is larger. And as we saw about the class on stalling, the larger the effective angle of attack, the sooner we will stall. So what you can have happening is this graph actually shortening and you get something along the lines of this. So your previous angle that you were at 
as soon as you go into ground wash is no longer good and you could be um, in a situation where you've stalled the aircraft. So when we enter the ground effect, the stalling angle of attack reduces. And if we combine that with the, this ballooning effect, we can sometimes stall the aircraft right at the point where we balloon and we fall out of the sky because we no longer have enough lift because we have stalled and we crunch it into the tarmac. This is something you're bound to experience at some point. So a nice quick class there, let's just summarize the key points. Ground effect is this reduction in drag or an increase in lift when you're close to the ground and it usually happens within a wingspan um, height of the ground and the closer you are to ground the more the effect is felt. There's two parts that make up the ground effect. There's the ram effect and the physical blocking of the wing tip vortices and that reduction in downwash. The ram effect is basically the air compressing beneath you and as the air compresses the amount of volume that it has goes down which means the density goes up and our density is directly proportional to our static pressure so that will increase the static pressure and that will push back against the aircraft as we're coming into land. The second thing is this reduction in wingtip forces so they come off the edge and then they start to hit the ground and stop and reduce in strength. This reduction in strength means we have a reduced amount of downwash and therefore our induced angle of attack reduces when we compare it to the condition where we are outside of groundwall effect. The reduced induced angle of attack means that our reaction force is more angled towards lift and less angled towards drag. Reducing the downwash means that we increase our effective angle of attack and that reduces our stalling angle of attack. So when you combine that with the ballooning effect of actually just in that sudden increase in lift, you can get to the point where you stall and you fall out the sky crunching into the tarmac. 